And some that we're doing, we have tremendous trade deals being made. And they're actually good deals for our country Wonderful. instead of bad deals for our country. So it's been good. Uh, I'm going to Ohio in a little while. We have uh, crowds of people that for two and a half, three days have been standing out in the cold. I don't know how they do it. They're strong people. Uh, but they've been out there, and it's uh, pretty much zero degrees. And uh, it's a great state. And we have a tremendous crowd, so I look forward to that. I'll be leaving in a little while. Uh, but we'll take a few questions, please. Yes, Mr. President. Chinese trade deal that you're working on. You're going to be signing next week, phase one. Can you give us a sense of phase two, what yeah. you hope to accomplish there, and will you be traveling to Beijing for that? Well, phase one is a big, big number. It's a big percentage of the deal. Uh, some would say half. Some would say uh, a little less or a little more than half. But it's a tremendous uh, percentage. It's pretty much all for the farmers, uh, also bankers. We also have regulations for a lot of different — a lot of things are covered that people are going to be very surprised to see. But it's a big chunk of it, and uh, we'll start uh, right away negotiating phase two. It'll take a little time. I think I might want to wait to finish it till after the election, because by doing that, I think we can actually make a little bit better deal, maybe a lot better deal. But phase one was uh, — is a phenomenal deal. It could be up to $50 billion in farm product. So that's something that uh, the most they ever did was $16 billion. So they go from $16 billion to up to $50 billion. So that's uh, numerous times more than they were buying in the past. It's going to have a huge impact. And I see farm prices are going way up. I see corn has just uh, had some big increases over the last little while. Cattle has been doing really well. And uh, the farmers like me anyway. That's what I like about the farmers. <laughs> but you know what I did do? And you, you know this better than anybody. I got uh, — I was able — they were targeted by China. You know, look, China's negotiating. I don't blame them. But they were targeted. They say, you know, the farmers like Trump, so we'll target the farmers. And they did. And the first year, it was $12 billion, And I took $12 billion. I asked Sonny Perdue, Secretary of Agriculture, what do you think, Sonny? He said, it's $12 billion. And I think that would have caused uh, tremendous consternation. And uh, they were hit for $12 billion. And I took $12 billion out of the tariffs. We had tens of billions of dollars left over. I gave it to the farmers. Next year, it was $16 billion. I took $16 billion out of the tariffs. I gave it to the farmers. So the farmers did pretty well. And now they're doing great. And uh, prices are going up very substantially. And uh, China is kicking in. China has already started to buy. Japan, the deal is done. They have been buying. It's a $40 billion deal. Uh, but the big question I have is whether or not the farmers will be able to supply that much, because it's much more than — it's the biggest contract ever signed. So uh, I think it'll be great for the farmers, but also great for regulatory, great for banks, you know that, uh, great for finance companies, uh, really a lot. Then we're going to be covering the opening of China uh, and various other things in phase two. And on impeachment, sir, would you support a deal for witnesses if that included testimony from Adam Schiff and Hunter Biden? Well, I'm going to leave it uh, to the Senate, but I'd like to hear the whistleblower. I'd like to hear uh, Shifty Schiff. I'd like to hear Hunter Biden and, and Joe Biden, you know, had his Hunter Biden with no experience whatsoever. Would anybody up, Sean, would you like the Hunter Biden job? He has no experience, making no money. And then all of a sudden, she's making millions and millions of dollars. You take that. Would you leave the union for that? I think so. Uh, no, huh? I'm not sure, Mr. President. I know so, but I'm not going to tell. No, no, I'd like to hear from Hunter Biden. I'd like to hear from uh, — he's a corrupt politician, Adam Schiff. He's corrupt. He gave a sentence — you know, he never knew I was going to release the transcript. He gave a sentence that he made up. He made it up. And it was not — it was not what was said in the conversation. That's why I released the transcript. Got approval from Ukraine. We released the exact transcript, and it turned out to be totally different. These are corrupt politicians. The whole thing is a hoax. But I would like to hear Hunter Biden, Joe Biden, Adam Shifty Schiff, uh, and some others. Uh, the informer that never showed up. You know, once I released the transcript, you know what happened. The informer, he never showed up. And the second whistleblower, John, whatever happened to the second whistleblower? The second whistleblower disappeared. There probably was none, or maybe we know who the second whistleblower was. Maybe we do. But he never showed up. All of a sudden, they don't talk, because they were really unexpectedly met with the actual conversation, the exact conversation. So, yeah, if we do that, I would like to have those people, plus others, testify. Because it's the greatest hoax ever perpetrated on the United States government. This has gone on since the day I came down the escalator. This isn't just here. This isn't just the Ukraine hoax. This is the witch hunt. This is the whole thing with Russia. That turned out to be a total fabricated plot. 
The ones who are guilty are the Democrats, the DNC, and all of the dirty cops that were involved, that we caught. Yeah. Uh, Mr. President, um, I'm sure you saw Mike Lee's comments. Did your national security team really say that it would be wrong for Congress to debate military action on Iran? So here's what happened on that. I had calls from numerous senators and numerous congressmen and women saying it was the greatest presentation they've ever had. Mike and Rand Paul disagreed because they want information that, honestly, I think is very hard to get. It's okay if the military wants to give it, but they didn't want to give it. And it really had to do with sources and information that we had that really should remain at a very high level. Could we individually maybe give one or two of them some information? Possibly, if we can do that. I get along great with Mike Lee. I've never seen him like that. But other people have called, and they've said uh, it was the best presentation they've ever seen. And let me tell you what was the best. Forget about presentation. The result. We killed a man who killed many, many Americans and many, many people, thousands and thousands of people. And when I go over to Walter Reed and I meet these young, incredible folks, mostly — it just seems mostly men, but also women — where their legs are gone, their arms are gone. In some cases, both the legs and the arms are gone, and the face and the body is badly damaged. And frankly, five years ago, they couldn't have lived, and today they can live because of the wonders of medicine and the wonders of Walter Reed and the people that over there, what the job they do, the medical doctors. But I will say this. Um, we caught a total monster, and we took him out. And that should have happened a long time ago. Uh, we did it because they were looking to blow up our embassy. We also did it for other reasons that were very obvious. Somebody died. One of our military people died. People were badly wounded just a week before. And we did it. And we had a shot at him, and I took it, and that shot was pinpoint accurate. And that was the end of a monster. Then — and that was really — that was the second attack. It was not — we didn't start it. They started by killing one of our people and wounding badly other of our people. So that you call retribution. Ukraine — if you look at what happened with Ukraine, that's a hoax. Well, this is a hoax, too. Iran went in, and they hit us with missiles. Shouldn't have done that, but they hit us. Fortunately for them, nobody was hurt, nobody was killed. Nothing happened. They landed — very little damage, even, to the base. They landed. But we had a chance to take out a monster. We took him out, and it should have been done a long time ago. Would you go to Congress to take further military action against Iran? Would you seek congressional approval? It would all depend on the circumstance. I don't have to, and you shouldn't have to be able, because you have to make split-second decisions sometimes. Sometimes you have to move very, very quickly, John. But. In certain cases, I wouldn't even mind doing it. So, you know what, I, what bothers me? When I see a Nancy Pelosi trying to defend this monster from Iran who's killed so many people, who's so badly — I mean, so many people are walking around now without legs and without arms, because he was the big roadside bomb guy. He was the one who'd send him to Afghanistan, had sent him to Iraq. He was big. That was his favorite thing. He thought it was wonderful. He doesn't think it's wonderful anymore. When Nancy Pelosi and the Democrats want to defend him, I think that's a very bad thing for this country. I think that's a big losing argument politically, too. Yeah. So, anyway, outside the JCPOA and also with total sanctions implemented, what's left if well, Iran — stand on JCPOA. It's close to expiring. In other words, if I didn't terminate it, it expires in a very short period of time. Uh, one of the problems, of which there was many, $150 billion, $1.8 billion in cash, all of that money. And then that money was used for terror. Because if you look at Iran, it wasn't so bad until they got all that money. They used that money for terror. That's when it became really bad. You just take a look. I mean, it really got bad when they had $150 billion, $1.8 billion in cash. The JP — the agreement — I always call it the Iran nuclear deal that didn't work. The Iran deal, it was just something that it was — is no — is no good for our country. It expires in a short time. That means they would be on their path to nuclear weapons. And for me, it's about nuclear weapons more than anything else. Iran cannot have a nuclear weapon. Iran will never have a nuclear weapon. They understand that. We have told them very strongly. Iran now is — not wealthy like it was when President Obama handed him $150 billion. 
They're a much different country. We'll see whether or not they want to negotiate. Maybe they want to wait till after the election and negotiate with a weak Democrat, somebody like a Biden or a Pocahontas or Buttigieg or one of these characters. Okay, maybe they want to wait. But I think they're probably well off doing it now because if you look at the polls and if you look at what's going on, we're doing very well. They're losing a tremendous amount. They're getting hurt very badly by the sanctions. It all can end very quickly. But as to whether or not they want, that's up to them. Not up to me. It's totally up to them. They can straighten out their country. Iran right now is a mess. They can straighten out the economics of their country very, very quickly. Let's see whether or not they negotiate. What's our leverage today? On these sanctions, when should we expect to see sanctions on Iran following the attacks? Uh, immediately. It's already been done, yeah. We've, we've increased them. They were very severe, but now it's increased substantially. Uh, I just approved it a little while ago with Treasury. Who will they be against and what sort of sanctions? Well, you'll see. I mean, we'll put out a minor announcement. It's actually a major event. It's like this. This is, to me, a major event. And so far, I have had no — I have had no questions on the fact that we can build a highway in, you know, a small fraction of the time, that we can build all of these beautiful bridges that we want to build, but they can't get approvals. I've had no questions on that. Are you shocked, Sean, when you hear that? No, I mean, Mr. President. honestly, they, they should be having some questions. Mr. Okay. President, yeah, John, go ahead. Mr. President, Mr. President, the plane that went down yeah. from Iran, what Terrible. do you think happened to that plane? Well, I have my suspicions. It was suspicions? very — I don't want to say that because other people have those suspicions also. Uh, it, it's a tragic thing when I see that. It's a tragic thing. Uh, but somebody could have made a mistake on the other side. Could have, could have made a mistake. It was flying, it was, it was flying in, uh, not our system. No, it has nothing to do with us. Uh, it was flying in a pretty rough neighborhood, and somebody could have made a mistake. Uh, some people say it was mechanical. I personally don't think that's uh, even a question. Personally, so we'll see what happens. I don't know. I really don't know. I don't want to get. That's up to them. At some point, they'll release the black box. Ideally, they'd get it to Boeing, but if they gave it to France or if they gave it to some other country, that would be okay, too. I think, you know, ideally, that will be released. I have a feeling that uh, it's just some very terrible — something very terrible happened, very devastating. Mr. President, yeah. the situation in Venezuela has not gone as smoothly as some people, likely even yourself, have, have, have hoped. What are you prepared to do? Well, I never thought it would go smoothly. Venezuela hasn't gone smoothly since it became a socialist or worse than that country. So I never expected anything to go smoothly. We'll see what happens with Venezuela. They're doing poorly. I mean, there's a great case. When I say this country will never be a socialist nation, there's a great case. It was a wealthy country 15 years ago, 20 years ago. That was like a really wealthy country. And now they don't have water. They don't have food. We're supplying a lot of food. We're supplying a lot of water. So, no, it takes a period of time. It's been, uh, you know, I've only been here a relatively short period of time. We'll see what happens. Are you prepared to do anything else, change Well, strategy? I'm not going to say that. No, I have, we have a good strategy, but we're taking care of people. We're helping people. Colombia is helping a lot of people. Some of the nations surrounding are helping people. But we're, I think we're doing a good job. They have a system that right now is very broken. We'll see what happens. Stay tuned. No, I think it was obvious. If you look at the protests, and this was the anti-Benghazi. This was uh, — Benghazi was a disaster. They showed up a long time after it took place. They saw burning embers from days before. Uh, I said, get out today, immediately. They were saying, we think we can have them tomorrow. I said, nope, they got to go right now. And they were on their way very quickly. And they got there almost — I mean, they got there quickly. They could have done that with Benghazi, too, by the way. Same — same thing. Uh, had they gotten there — had they done what I did, you wouldn't have had — you wouldn't know the name Benghazi. It would not be a very famous name. Now it's a very famous name. This was the anti-Benghazi. Uh, we got the Apaches there very quickly. They were doing the flares. People didn't know what was happening. But if you look at those protesters, they were rough warriors. They weren't protesters. They were — Iranian-backed. Some were from Iraq, but they were Iranian-backed, absolutely. And they were looking to do damage, and they were breaking the windows. And, you know, those are very structurally strong windows, as you know. And they were almost through. And had they gotten through, I believe we would have either had a hostage situation or we would have had a — worse, we would have had a, a lot of people killed. 
Those people were going to do very serious harm. They were soldiers. They were warriors. And we stopped it. We stopped it. That was a totally organized plot. And you know who organized it. That man right now is not around any longer, okay? And he had more than that particular embassy in mind. President, did you have a problem with John Bolton testifying in the Senate trial? Always got along with him. Uh, he didn't get along with some of our people.